it's lovely to see you all here this afternoon. Energy up for the guys that are presenting today. Um, I'd just like to start by just telling you a little bit about ALF. We are the leading online data and insights platform, helping agencies and ad tech specialists to target the leading brands, giving you the key information to help you get in front of marketing decision makers and win more clients. So, good luck everybody, and let the challenge begin. Welcome to the club, 660. This is where you meet six startups in 60 minutes. My name's Jeremy Bassett, I'm CEO of CoCubed, uh, and we're a London-based innovation agency that sits at the nexus of helping the world's largest brands connect with the world's most innovative startups. If I can get my clicker to work, oh, maybe you can help me get to the next screen. Uh, we've got a stand right here. If you're interested in meeting some of the 35 companies that are here and showcasing their innovative technology, then uh, feel free to get in touch with the CoCube team who can help you connect, or you can just go and talk to them. They're in picnic tables right around this space, the House of Innovation. But here's a 30 second overview of what we do at CoCube. So uh, we've been engaging with a whole bunch of different brands over the last two days. We started off uh, with Diageo, and then we've gone through all the way today to Pizza Hut. Uh, and a couple of months ago, we engaged with the team from Pizza Hut, and they set us the challenge of how do we find companies. Well, I'll, I'll let Kat talk through the brief, actually. But she gave us the brief, and then we've been on this process of share, scout, select. I'm not sure if we can get to the next slide. There we go. Um, and we've had over 35 companies uh, here at the Brand Challenge. We, our panel selected the top six, and then one of them will be selected to pitch for the chance to run a 20K paid pilot with Pizza Hut. Uh, the way this works, if it's your first Brand Challenge, we've got six companies, three minute pitches, a couple minutes for questions, and then Kat will be back to announce the winner of the 20K paid pilot. Unfortunately, because of an NHS alert, Kat can't be here in person, so she's joining us virtually. Hi Kat, great to see you. Hi Jeremy, hi everyone. Sorry I can't be with you today. Kat, you were in like the racing car seat here. Oh, you know what? So that I didn't have a breaking connection, I've come down to my other half's office, so I'm in the gaming, in I'm in the <laughs> gaming environment. I but love that. You shouldn't have a problem with connection. All right, brilliant. Kat, why don't you talk us through what you do at Pizza Hut and yeah, what you're interested in. Cool, so um, I'm head of digital marketing for Pizza Hut in the UK and Europe. I'm here um, as, my, as my UK role. In the UK, we um, do the digital marketing for Pizza Hut delivery business. Um, as you know, the QSR category is increasingly kind of more and more competitive and it's really important that we remain front of mind. So as well as doing that kind of hardcore performance marketing and driving sales to the website, we're really focused on also how do we build brand awareness and consideration and remain front of mind for those consumers out there so they make us their brand of choice. Okay, and uh, you put forward the brief. Why don't you talk through the brief that the startups are answering today? Sure. So, um, I mean, as a brand, we are trying to be what we call red. So relevant, easy, and distinctive. So easy is obviously all, all about being easy to access and easy to use. Relevancy is, of course, having products that are relevant to the customer, but it's also being relevant to the cultural code and society. And then distinctiveness is about kind of having that really distinctive brand, being really ownable and consistent. And I guess the, the brief today really um, ties into the second half of that, which is how can we be really 
culturally relevant and distinctive so that we have that front of mind um, awareness with, with consumers out there and we become the brand of choice. So I'm really looking for ideas today that tap into kind of society and culture that are really going to engage prospective customers and drive that talkability and that buzz around the brand. Okay. And when it comes to the six companies, how are you going to select which company walks away with the 20K check? So I think we really want to make sure that it's an idea that makes the brand stand out. And as I said, drives that talkability and that buzz around the brand. I guess we are looking for ideas that are new and innovative. So maybe stuff we haven't tried before, but also, you know, we're, it's a commercial organization and we're a commercial business and we need to drive benefit for our franchisees. So it's really important that we see it's something that's going to work, right? And we're going to see some tangible results. Perfect. All right, Kat. Well, sit tight. We'll be seeing you for the Q&A. But now it's time to kick off our brand challenges. So the first company that we have uh, is looking at how can you predict consumer behavior? So from Olven, here's Steve. Cheers. Does it work now? Hello, everybody. So I'll try to keep it brief within three minutes. Uh, my name is Steven, and I'm from Olven, and I'll be presenting our flagship product today, Almanac. Almanac is a SaaS-based platform which you can access online, um, like a traditional SaaS platform, and get instant access to basically billions of data points on what consumers are doing in the real world. So the idea is we take out all the nitty-gritty work of doing the data analytics uh, by ingesting ourselves um, over 2 billion cell phone mobile hits a day, so geolocation hits on where people are, overlaying that with other data sets like geospatial data, demographical data, um, weather, finance, and so on, so that then brands can make active decisions on how to leverage that data and better target their consumers. So how can we specifically help Pizza Hut today? Um, in a few ways. Uh, the main ones I'm going to be focusing on are competitor oversight, understanding your competition and their consumers, gaining market share, and driving customer loyalty. So how can we gain a little bit of a competitive edge by having access to other competitors' data, but also their consumers? We can understand both where Pizza Hut places itself, that can be industry-wide or against a specific competitor, understanding again that competitor's consumers, and then concentrating those efforts around those consumers to then move on to the next one, which is gaining market share. Now, once you know where those consumers are and when they're there, you can then target them through essentially marketing initiatives um, in various forms and shapes. And of course, always measure how that is performing both in real time and post initiative. This in turn is going to help them understand both how this one is performing and adapt in real time, but also on how you're going to do your next one. And lastly, we want to drive consumer loyalty by identifying not only demographic hotspots, but other businesses that consumers interact with before or after they visit a Pizza Hut. Same with your competitors. And then leveraging that for things like where the next best location is for a new restaurant or location to open, um, but also where maybe to double down efforts um, with uh, your competitors. So discovering promotional opportunities at a community level, so where your consumers are interacting with, is something I really want to highlight today given the um, pitch that we got just before. Um, and again, using that data to then uh, uh, discover the next best location, but also where those consumers are and interacting with them where they are. Now, Yum Brands, Pizza Hut's parent company, recently bought Vantam Analytics, which focuses around marketing insights. Coupling those marketing insights with what consumers are doing in the real world will give Pizza Hut an advantage and an edge in terms of, again, understanding consumers, where they are, and how to better target them within their community. That's about it for us. Excellent. Well done, Steve. Let's get Kat back and uh, we'll jump into some questions. Kat. Hey, Hi, Kat. Thanks. thanks very much for that. Um, how, do, how do people act to generally activate off of this data? So are, they, are you feeding that data into a media agency or does your platform do the programmatic buying? So um, within three minutes, I had to keep it kind of brief, but on the data itself, so we basically get it anonymized. So first of all, we don't have any specific people's data. Um, we just get, I guess, gross anonymized data and then crunch that data on the back end 
and present it in an easy to use fashion via the platform. Uh, the idea being doing all the heavy lifting in the back end so you guys can just get access to the actual data and leverage it for your decision making. Okay, and so then we would just take those segments and kind of buy those through whichever media we decided to buy them. Yeah, exactly. We want to provide you with the information purely, so where they are, who they are, uh, what days, what times, etc. And then it's up to you to decide what strategy you want to take on how to better target them and how to engage with that community. Great, thank you. You're very welcome. And, um, how, this, I mean, this is a very me question, I apologise. What's your commercial model? Is it done on a retainer, on a project basis? So we are actually a subscription basis at $249 a month, staying very competitive within the landscape. Um, and then we have an added benefit is with those 249, you not only get access to historical data, but also predictive data on what consumers are going to do in the next coming months, giving you again a further edge. And how do you support brands in terms of onboarding to make sure we get the most of the platform? Great question. We not only have, of course, a customer success team that ensures your onboarding goes as smoothly as possible. We, of course, are always there at a moment's notice to not only help you find it if you're having trouble finding it on the platform, but also better navigate it for future use. Cool, cool. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thanks, Steven. Thanks, Kat. Cheers. So we're now going to have a look at the uh, wild world of UGC. And to tell us more from my appy, here's Sam. Testing, testing. Gosh, it's uh, a lot scarier getting, where's the, uh, oh there, thanks mate. Yeah, it's a lot more scary up here than in the bleachers. Probably should have had that extra gin. Anyway, my name's Sam. I am the Enterprise Account Director over at MyAppy, and my mission is to help uh, as many of the world's most recognizable brands harness the value of their customer stories. So, how do we help Pizza Hut stay relevant and create a buzz in the highly competitive QSR sector? Well, look, one of the biggest challenges that brands have uh, now is the fact that consumer trust is at an all-time low. You've got GDPR, you've got post Cameron Analytica, you've got all you marketing agencies out there dropping cookies on my browser following my every move to the point where nobody trusts anybody. The Nielsen Consumer Trust in Advertiser Report says 92% of people trust user-generated content more than all forms of traditional marketing now. So basically what that means is Pizza Hut can't just go out there and tell the marketplace about what they're doing to create a buzz or change the world or whatever. Because the reality is, we don't really want to hear it from you anymore. So then begs the question, okay, if how do we become one of the most talked about marketing, or sorry, talked about restaurants in the QSR sector if 92% of people would rather listen to a stranger than us? And that's where we come in. So if you haven't figured it out by now, it is our core belief that your brands, uh, well, that your customers are the loudest voice when it comes to your brand's perception in the marketplace. So what we've gone and done is we've created software to make that scalable. Oh, how clever we are. And we call that a user-generated content platform. Now, most brands have uh, their customers posting content about their brands on a daily basis across social media. Um, which brands are obviously able to use and across their marketing assets if they get permission. What you can also do is you can also incentivize and create campaigns to ask your, or basically encourage your fans to create content around a more defined brief. Like, I don't know, recreate Harry Kane's match winning goal against Denmark last night. Don't forget to take Pizza Hut. But uh, yeah, basically our technology provides the infrastructure to be able to collect this content, curate this content, license this content, and then deploy this within your marketing assets, whether that's creating shoppable images, displaying on your website on a social feed, or regramming, or you can even feed it into digital display screens in restaurants and stores or whatever. So, now you know what's possible. Oh, back one. Now you know what's possible. How does our platform work? Well, there is four main components to our platform, and I'm gonna quickly blast through each one because I think I've got like 30 seconds left. Um, number one, we collect the content. And we do that across all your major social channels via hashtag, at mentions, image tags, location tags. We can even go and uh, encourage people to upload direct to a brand's website. Um, so that's collect. We curate. So we use machine learning algorithms to be able to curate the content, show the bits you want to show, hide the bits you don't. Um, the third major element is we, our, our platform allows you to be able to go out and get explicit consent from the content creators to be able to use the content within your assets. And the fourth element is we allow you to deploy, we allow you to deploy that in whatever 
sort of means you'd like to, again, whether that's regramming, social feeds, etc. Uh, and the last major element to our platform, which I'm super excited to share, uh, we've launched this this year, is Mappy Communities. Not only can you do the above four, but you can now go out and identify your most engaged content creators, invite them into a community, uh, nurture them and turn them into brand advocates or ambassadors or micro-influencers or nano-influencers or whatever you want to call them, and then incentivize them to continue creating great content that you can use for your brand, whether that be around a specific brief, specific campaign, whatever. And we call that Miapi Communities. Now, there's many different ways you can use our content, and we work with some of the biggest... Many different ways we can use our content, uh, whether that's reducing content costs, saving time, getting free content, getting content that's higher engagement, increasing basket size, whatever. We work with some of the biggest brands across all these major use cases, but the overarching goal of our platform is to re-establish trust uh, and authenticity within our marketing. Uh, and that was my TED talk. And that's a bit of UGC for Pizza Hut. Love it. Cheers. Let's jump straight into questions. Sure. Hi, thanks very much for that. You're How, welcome. How um, do you deploy the content onto into the different ecosystems if we wanted to put it on our website or on our digital screens? Yep, sure. So we, if you wanted to create a social war on your website, we basically use an iframe, which you can just implement to the back end of your website. Um, if you want, you're able to take the content off platform and deploy it however you like manually. We also have an integration with Hootsuite as well, so if you want to use it within your social planning tools, and etc. Um, what kind of brief do you find works? So I guess, actually I'll rephrase that. In sure. a world where I guess we don't necessarily find we get the best quality UGC content, not necessarily stuff that we would want to reuse, I sure. assume the solution to that is to kind of put a brief out there and get people to create it for you. What kind of briefs do you find work well? Do you go narrow or broad? Uh, yeah, good question. Well. We typically would advise companies to go an always-on campaign, which means you just choose a hashtag which you would have, you know, depending on your market. You can also create different campaigns, obviously, around a sporting event, so you could do something for the Euros. That's obviously trending at the moment. And just going back to what you were saying before about quality of content, well, the beauty of our platform is, like, the reality is there's a lot of content being put online about with Pizza Hut. I mean, it's a global brand. There's a lot of content out there. So our platform is able to sift and curate the content, and you're able to easily find the content that's actually good. Because you are right, there's a lot of rubbish out there. So our platform allows you to identify this, the best content, and then you can go one further and, uh, and, and engage with the content creator, and then group them into like a core group of brand advocates, or whatever you want to call them, and then leverage them further, so you can continue getting great UGC. Great, thank you. Very no cool. worries. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Kat. All right, well, Kat is blaming this chair on her partner. I'm not too sure, though. Uh, we're all spending a lot of time gaming. But the big question is, how do brands engage in eSports uh, and eGames? So to tell us more from Challenger Mode, here's Dan. Thank you very much. One, two, one, two. I uh, would love to enter you to challenge mode properly, but unfortunately they are not here. A uh, bit of a COVID problem with quarantine, so the actual team is back in Sweden. Thankfully, I've got a bit of a video to help me out here, so if we can press play on that. Hopefully. All right, apparently not video, fine. Starting off then. Sorry, I'm... There we go. Right, so here to talk a little bit about challenge mode and how the platform can help Pizza Hut build long-lasting relationships with gamers. So there's no denying that eSports is becoming one of our sports in the world. Hundreds of million people watch the events every year. There's a lot of it going on in the curriculum in schools and you've got a lot of main sports personalities investing heavily. So it's an entertainment format which is in its infancy but has a lot of potential for engaging young audiences, particularly gamers and increasingly those beyond the core gaming demographic. So, QSR industry has realized this, and we've seen heavy investment in the space as gaming opens up to a new, young, and engaged audience. Gamers are notoriously difficult to reach and to win over, so they don't consume the same type of media that others do, and they're quite resistant to corporate messaging. How do we fix that? Well, 
we give gamers a reason to come back to Pizza Hut. So essentially we create a space where gamers can engage with the brand organically and on their own terms. In this case, it means building a particular Pizza Hut arena, a esports arena, if you will, where esports integrates seamlessly with the advertising that Pizza Hut engages in. So in this instance, it allows for tournaments every hour, every day, for well, up to a period of three months in this instance. And yeah, we bring people to the platform. Esports, Pizza Hut gains access to hundreds of millions of potential esports players, and they gain access to exactly the sort of entertainment and advertising which engages with them. So. This is an example of what the space looks like. So essentially it offers them a consolidated way of engaging with Pizza Hut. Gamers are notoriously difficult to get to take anywhere. So the importance of Twitch and Steam gives you an excellent example of why they pick one space and stick with it. In this instance, we create that exact environment, but with the Pizza Hut branding, messaging, and tone. So this drives sort of brand awareness that you're after and the ground buzz and provides gamers with exactly the sort of entertainment that they're after, so engaging in a way that speaks to them on their terms, on their home turf. So I uh, can't pretend to know what you're planning to do with Pizza Hut Gaming, but this does all seamlessly integrate thanks to our API. Ideally, this would give a whole host of content to PizzaHutGaming.com and in return give Pizza Hut Gaming access to millions of gamers that use the Calendar Mode platform every day. So, uh, this is just a short example of the sort of activation that we'd be looking for. So, hourly tournaments, no admin requirement for Pizza Hut because thanks to automation, everything is completely automated from the setup of tournaments all the way through to paying prizes to players. And yeah, engaging gamers in a way that builds a loyal community that can be leveraged for years to come. Okay, thank you. And any questions? Good. Thank you, Dan. What, what would a successful pilot or campaign look like if we were to do the three months? What does that look like over the three month period? So over a three month period, we would ideally like to run hourly tournaments open to all of the players which are currently using challenger mode. And this would go on for every day for the whole three months and it would, you would sort of expect returns fairly immediately because of how the messaging integrates with the gameplay and the way that people engage with those tournaments. So. Fairly quick. Okay. And how, um, how much work would it be for us internally in terms of what do we manage and what do you manage? Um, beyond the initial messaging, very little upfront work required for Pizza at all because obviously the tournaments are automated to the point where you can essentially plug in exactly what you want and they will play and the gamers will obviously play the games however they wish and yeah, sort of integrate with the advertising fairly seamlessly. The upfront admin cost is very low. Great, Very thank cool. You. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. All everyone. right, there we go. We're going to stay. Yeah. Uh, we're going to stick on the theme of gaming, and we're going to have a look at how you can do in-game advertising. So let's jump into Bitstack. Hello. I've become really socially awkward from um, sitting behind a computer for a year, so this is a, a massive jump, but. Um, Let's jump into it. Um, so yeah, we're Bidstack. Uh, we're an ad tech platform that uh, basically allows brands to dynamically change and insert advertising into spaces that look like they should be in the real world. So you'll see two examples up here. Um, we empower brands to basically make sure that they are creating um, and executing branded experiences um, that uh, that fits seamlessly to environment. So we also empower publishers to upheld the integrity and the art form. So as you can see, you've got two examples there. If you're in a racing uh, game and you are driving around and the mud splashes up the ad, it will basically look like the, the, the rain, the mud is kind of sliding down as well. So all looks very realistic. Um, anyone here a gamer? To much surprise, not many of you put your hand up but there are 2.8 billion people in the world playing games, and actually, over half of them don't admit to it. I think it's because the stereotypical gamer 
is someone who's like a teenager, sits in their bedroom, just like kind of spends hours on end. Uh, I'm hoping this video works, actually, because the entire presentation is a video. So if it doesn't play, oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, so yeah, the stereotypical game is someone that sits in their bedroom all day, but they're not. There is actually a very low gender disparity between males and females. Um, and uh, gaming is becoming a huge cultural powerhouse. In fact, uh, last year, gaming raked up to uh, 160 billion pounds uh, dollars, actually, in, in revenue. Um, and it's outstripping both the music and the film industries combined. Even so, that when Travis Scott did his activation in Fortnite uh, last year, it had 12 million people attend the event, and it was an ad for Nike. So um, it's becoming much talk about. Um, football's coming home, obviously. Um, you've got people like Gareth Bale um, and, and Jesse Lingard who are creating their own esports teams. Obviously, the money's in gaming, that's why they're doing it. But they're actually finding that there is a crossover between uh, the real life football element and also uh, gaming, too. So, what we just showed you there was basically our own product, which is called High Five, where we basically test existing and new formats and see how we can implement Pizza Hut into this experience. This one here is called Grandstand. Um, and while we kind of look at the ways in which we can integrate Pizza Hut seamlessly, we also look at how it's actually measurable. Because, yes, it looks great, but actually, how do you know this? is actually working. So the first thing we do is we look at lovely viewability, keyword here. Um, we actually have uh, created our own proprietary technology that uh, scans 3D environments. So it shows you how much of the ad is in view, the angle of the ad, um, the screen occupancy, etc. Um, and we take that further and we also look at how um, the effectiveness of the ad works in these environments, which we work with a company called Lumen, attention, they're over there if you want to know more about them. Um, but we've actually found that in-game ads actually generate 4.1 times more brand recall compared to traditional display advertising. Does it work? Yes, it does work. Um, so the, ad, the, the audience is here. Gen Z, millennials, 58% of them love to share their online experiences when it comes to uh, gaming. Uh, they love downloadable content. In fact, downloadable content is really popular amongst females, hence why Tommy Hilfiger did their collection in Animal Crossing. Um, so if Pizza Hut wants to keep their finger on the pulse, then they need to get in the game. Thank you. Get in the game. Come on, Kat. Um, it feels like it's fairly new technology. If we're talking about trying to reach a broad range of people, is there a broad range of games this is available in? Yes, exactly it is, yeah. So you, you can be selective with the type of games that you want to choose, um, and then you can look at targeting a specific audience, and our platform allows you to do that in the same way you would buy display advertising or video advertising. You can buy in-game advertising in the same methodology. And it's a similar kind of targeting capability in terms of what audiences and demographics and stuff you can choose? Correct. So you've got kind of standard uh, demographic uh, demographic targeting, age, location, etc. But then also each game has its kind of individual first party data as well. So for example, if you just wanted to target Premier League stadiums in Football Manager, you can do that. And um, what are the, are there creative restrictions? So obviously some of the spaces feel like look a little bit small, so it's more suitable for branding versus like more commercially led ads? It kind of depends. Um, I think the, the best kind of example you can do is you can just do billboards uh, on the side of a racetrack, or you can do open world environment billboards as they would look in the real world, right, right down to a really deep integration. So say, for example, someone is playing a hugely popular game called Rainbow Six Siege, and you can have a customizable skin someone can wear, actually Pizza Hut clothing. It sounds weird, but actually people love it. Anything that kind of gives them an opportunity to level up, they'll take it. Um, and that's kind of the real deep integration you can get that actually has that kind of more level of engagement. Great, thank you. Very cool. Well done. All right, that's four done. We've actually got a bonus company for you today, so we've got three to go. We're now going to look at Premium Mobile Creative. And to tell us more, from Adludio, Ken. Hi, so I'm Kimvara Bentley and I head up the EMEA sales team at Adludio. So Adludio is a global creative mobile tech platform and we specialize in mobile engagement. So if I was to ask you what your most memorable ad of all time was, 
you'd more than likely think of a TV ad. But if I was to ask you what your most memorable mobile ad was, you'd be pretty hard pushed to give me an answer. Why is this? TV is a brilliant medium for broadcasting to users on an emotional level using the senses of sight and sound. But the way we consume content on our mobiles is fundamentally different. You're constantly scrolling, swiping, and tapping. So this is what Adlidio is about. We create premium brand experiences that tap into the phone's native technologies. Come on. Oh, there we go. Right, so a recent study by Nielsen said that the most important factor to drive success for a campaign was creative. The main USP really behind Adludio is the tech behind the creative. So most mobile creative is built using HTML5, it's standard. But sometimes when you want to publish a page, you'll see like a box where an ad should have appeared. So we have developed our own markup language on top of HTML5 HTML5 that allows us to have these super lightweight, visually stunning and responsive ad units. Because of this, we can bill on a cost per engagement buying model, meaning that your budget is only ever activated once a user physically engages with the creative. Over the last six years that we've been growing as a business, we have collected a significant amount of creative data, which we use to inform our decision-making process. So we know what engagement type is most appropriate for your desired target audience and campaign KPI. We also offer what we call a brand impact optimizer. This is basically a mini brand survey that's done in real time that allows you to measure soft metrics like brand affinity, brand sentiment, purchase consideration. We run this on all managed service campaigns. The great thing about this is it allows us to make adjustments to the campaign while it's live, so you don't have to wait to your next burst of activity to apply your learnings. Right, so the creative. We have our own internal design team. We require 10 working days on receipt of assets to get creative built, approved, and live. Hopefully, this is going to work. So the first creative uses a slider functionality. The user's invited to slide across <clears throat> to discover different flavors of pizza. And then there's a clear CTA inviting the user to find out more. The second creative is one of our innovation formats. It's called the physics unit. You flick up on the ball. As the ball bounces around the frames of the iPhone, the image in the center changes, showcasing the different flavors that Pizza Hut have to offer. And then the third creative concept is a user choice type creative. This is good if you want to showcase a lot of content. So the user chooses on the offer they want to explore. And then obviously there's a level of animation and then a clear CTA at the end. Why does it work? Adelio's offering is based on kinesthetic learning. We know that consumers are 10 times more likely to engage and remember an ad that they've engaged with. Thank you. Very cool. Well done, Kim. All right. Let's jump into questions. Hi, Kim. So uh, thank you for that. I guess um, we know that a lot of display ads are ignored. So while I I understand once someone has, I guess, engaged with the interactive ad, it's quite compelling. But what's, how do you, I guess, what's the successful ways you've seen or what works in terms of getting them to engage with it in the first place? Okay, so our average engagement rate is around 20, 25%. So one in four, one in five people choose to um, engage with our ads. I think it's all about having like the relevant creative on the relevant content with the relevant context. So blending all of that together, and you're definitely going to see results. Cool. And who builds the creative? Are you building all that creative? And do you have creative um, development people who can help us and help us understand what's going to work and best practice? Absolutely. So we quite like to work a bit like a consultant. We have our own team of developers and designers, and we kind of work with you from start to finish. Obviously, we like to come up with like proactive concepts like you've seen, but we can work with your creative agency, directly with you, however you want to do it. And what, sorry, Jeremy, we'll be running out right. of time. One more, one more. <laughs> um, what's, the, what's the most successful ad that you've ever done? The most successful ad? To be honest, like, obviously it varies on like, your KPI, but for example, we ran an amazing ad for Grundig, and the like, average dwell time was 30 seconds, which is incredible. So you actually have a consumer who's spending that long on an ad, which is really, really strong um, for that sort of awareness-driven piece. Great, thank you. Very thank cool. You.
Thanks, Ken. All right, we've got two to go. We're now going to turn our attention to voice. So from Say It Now, here is Charlie. So good afternoon. Uh, and before we begin, I'd just like to say, firstly, I'm very grateful for uh, being invited here this afternoon. And secondly, I'm really excited to share this story with you all. So I'm Charlie Cabri, the CEO of Say It Now, and I we're an ad tech business, and we focus in the world of audio advertising. So we run campaigns across Spotify, Amazon Music, and any radio station you'd care to mention. Now, what makes us a little bit different is that we use voice assistants, so Google's assistants and Amazon Alexa, to drive people down that funnel towards purchase. Now, why should we be excited about doing that right now? So, smart speakers are the fastest ever consumer goods. There's now one in 43% of UK homes. That's grown 20, 23% year on year. And we know that people who have these use them every single day. And why audio? Now, audio is incredibly exciting. So we know that this is the year of audio innovation. We know that people are listening to audio more and more as they spend more and more time at home. We know that listening is way up. We know that people are engaging with their smart speakers more and more. And the IAB says that audio advertising will grow by double by 2023 to a 1.5 billion opportunity by 2023. So we've created actionable audio ads. So piggybacking on existing channels, so you still run a 30 or 40 second audio creative. But at the end, the call to action is to engage with the smart speaker. So we can now highly target our inventory towards people who are listening on smart speaker. And global, so then Q1 2021, more than half of their digital inventory is being listened to on a smart speaker. But so what? So what for Pizza Hut? So let's talk about Simon. Simon is a big pizza fan. Friday nights, pizza night, he makes pizza sometimes with his family. When he can't be bothered, which is more often than not, he orders pizza in. Simon is not a Pizza Hut customer. He's not a Pizza Hut man. However, in the corner of his kitchen here, you can see Simon has a smart speaker. So he can, on a Friday afternoon, serve an audio advertisement to him on that smart speaker that might sound a little bit like this. Now listen very carefully to what Simon says at the end of the radio ad. Hello, fanatics of football. At Pizza Hut, we get asked, do you deliver for the big game? You bet your pumped up balls we do. And here's something more beautiful than the beautiful game. 50% off delivery orders. Just ask this device to talk to Pizza Hut deals. Now that's delivery. Hey Google, talk to Pizza Hut deals. Okay, let's get the Pizza Hut deals. Welcome to Pizza Hut. Would you like to get the 50% discount coupon now or hear more details? Get the coupon. Great choice. Can I send that coupon to your default Google email address? Yes, please. Fantastic. Your coupon will arrive shortly. Just use it when you check out your next order. Come back soon for more great deals. Now, you can see that Simon is now a Pizza Hut customer. So he'll be ordering for Pizza Hut every Friday. He's within your CRM. And unlike any other audio campaign that you've ever run before, we get in the moment live um, metrics about when the audio is served, how many people then engage with that, and how many coupons are then delivered. We're able to optimize in real time um, and improve um, on your audio campaigns. It takes just four weeks. So we've got a templated um, system so we can then build your campaign and get it live by mid-August. There's some interesting technolog technological advancements coming through from these platforms and it's a very good chance that we can have a technology first and help win awards with our campaign together. I'd welcome any questions. Love the demo there, Charlie. All right, let's jump into questions. Yeah, the demo was great. Thank you, Charlie. Um, I, I assume that you also support with the kind of voucher distribution and we're not, you're not looking for us to have our own skill necessarily. No, no, we, we build the skill. We have a template. It's golden path to skill redemption. <laughs> awesome. And um, how, and, and is that the same with the distribution of the, the vouchers as well? You, you send them out or you need to integrate into our CRM system? So we, we can do either. So we can either send them out on your behalf and to deliver reports or we can integrate into a system that you already have. Great. And um, what's your commercial model? So £2.50 CPM on um, the uh, audio inventory. Great. Thank you very, very cool. much. That was awesome. Thanks, Charlie.
All right. Our lucky last pitch for the t today is looking at how can Pizza Hut engage with a younger audience uh, through influencers. To explain more from Bump, here's Robbie. Hi, Katrina. Um, right, we're Bump. Let's cut straight to the chase and get into it. So, about 11 years ago, Ed Sheeran had 10,000 followers on, so 11,000 followers on Twitter, and he did a freestyle with Example um, talking about chicken. I love chicken, and they wouldn't shut up about how much they love chicken. 11 years later, Ed Sheeran's the most streamed artist on Spotify. How, how is this relevant to Pizza Hut? According to this brief, Pizza Hut have to align with the tastemakers of tomorrow. We're Bump, let's get into who we are and why we're relevant to Pizza Hut. We've got context and insights. We'll present you our platform and making it happen. Cool, context, we've got lockdown easing. The Roaring Twenties are coming. You know, we've got Leeds Festival, Reading Festival selling out within minutes. So all this pent up demand is ready to explode for Pizza Hut. Quick, quick timeline to us. We started in 2015, we blew up to 150,000 global music members. And from here, um, we started an agency because we kind of thought that big brands were being serviced by long in the tooth agencies with large overheads. We're a small guerrilla marketing, style, marketing style agency. All our staff are 18 to 25, and they've formerly been on universal credit. So we're cheap, we're highly effective, and we're social first. We offer strategy and research and activation, both for Pizza Hut's briefs today. Quick dive into our members. We're global, heavily UK-focused, very metropolitan city-focused as well. Our audience are highly active. Over half of the users are using it every single day and three quarters of them using it, um, sorry, three quarters of our audience are 18 to 24. And we've also got a large millennial audience, highly relevant to Pizza Hut. Okay, this is where we go a bit niche and we're really gonna get into the fine tune of, of this brief. So our audience are, they go to four times more than the national average in music festivals. They're really involved in the music industry and, and chasing experiences. Here's a quick case study with Pioneer DJ, which we launched across Instagram and TikTok in a quick and easy fashion. As you can see, they were really happy with our performance, um, and we always use quantitative and qualitative insights from our community to drive results. Cool, the brief. It's competitive, the QSR sector. This is all about awareness. How do we establish quick awareness and buzz for Pizza Hut immediately? using culture, staying front of mind, driving positive sentiment, and, and really creating buzz more than anything. Cool, this is our idea. Pizza Hut and Bump present a slice of the underground, a celebration of the UK's hottest musical flavors. Cool, a slice of the underground, we think that Pizza Hut have to collaborate with culture in real time. Right, we've got a multifaceted approach which is ready to go today. We've got Spotify playlists, which aren't being used yet currently in Spotify, which can allow positive sentiment after your consumers leave their stores. We've got in-store event series, and we've got a 12-inch vinyl release and an NFT drop for the gaming fans out there. Finally, we've got an ambassador network, which will activate over Instagram and TikTok. So that's our platform, really, a multifaceted approach, and really tapping into the grassroots uh, talent of tomorrow. We've got ambassadors already lined up. We've got an idea of media partners we'd love to work with on our own platform. Our team, um, we're young, as mentioned, we're 18 to 25, we're social first, but we're investor backed. Our cornerstone investor has got 44 number ones, 44 number ones in the UK music industry, and he's brought in over 400 million pounds of revenue into the UK economy. He's the chairman of Scope Charity, which is the charity for disabled people in the UK, and he's a trustee of Calm. The slice of the underground is ready for delivery. Pizza Hut, you've got the dough, we've got the flavors. Let's deliver this pizza today. Thank you. Genius. All right. What do you reckon, Kat? Well, oh, thank you very much for that, Robbie. Um, do you, it's, there seems quite a lot in your proposal. Do you yeah. think it can really be done for the pilot budget? 100%. So we've received a grant from the government called the Kickstarter Scheme, 
which currently hired seven new employees in the past two months, um, which are, will enable us to activate all of, the, all of this. So we've got a social media manager, we've got an event producer, we've got a researcher and strategist, we've got all our admin team. So yes, with seven new staff and a potential of eight more to hire, this really highlights our value and how quickly we can get on this kind of multifaceted campaign. And how long would you see that initial campaign lasting? And then how would you like maintain afterwards? So we built that initial buzz, but then you, we obviously don't want it just to disappear. So then what would make maintenance look like? So can I just repeat your question? So we've got the, the setup phase, right? So the, the creative on our part, we feel like we've, we've done a lot of the back end already. We really feel like we've got this idea ready to go and to be set up. Was that the first part of the question? Yeah, yeah, the first part was how long is how long is that initial campaign that you spoke about, but then also once you've kind of built all of that, how do you maintain it once that initial period is over? Okay, cool. Um, the first part of the campaign, I think we can, we can literally get to work on today, and it can be done by the end of Q4 this year. Um, as lockdown's easing, we've got events opening up, um, and regards the long-term exploration of this idea, We've got a Spotify playlist, which I think for, for customers in store, it's so important in the local cities to realize who are the up and coming hot flavors that they should be listening to and what's Pizza Hut got to say in this cultural conversation, really. Like Nando's did 11 years ago with Ed Sheeran when he had 11,000 followers. Who are, Pizza Hut, who are Pizza Hut targeting today to really to, to partner with the next talent of tomorrow? Um, does, does that answer the, the final question? Yes, it does. Thank you Good. very much. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Robbie. All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to give Kat a couple of minutes to go away and uh, think about what she's seen and work out which company she would like to award the 20K pilot to. So, Kat, before we announce the winner, I'd love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the companies you've seen? Let's start with Olven and their approach to predicting uh, consumer behavior. Um, so, oh, yeah, all about the data. I think that was super helpful. And as we start thinking about kind of planning into next year um really helpful and i love the fact that you can then track that data afterwards and see where you're making a difference cool cool and then we had a look at my appy and their approach to user generated content thoughts on my appy um so the fact that it's all in one platform in terms of the content the curate the consent and the deploy was really good i think maybe it's you know i've seen that elsewhere so maybe not the innovation that i'm looking for Cool. Uh, and then we had Challenger Mode and their approach to enabling brands to engage with esports. What were your thoughts on Challenger Mode? So they're totally right. I think that gaming audience is really key for the QSR category and they are an incredibly difficult group to engage with in a genuine way. Um, so really interesting um, concept in terms of getting that ongoing engagement. And then we kept on with the gaming theme, looking at in-game advertising. What were your thoughts on Bidstack? Really liked Bidstack. I think we have got kind of Pizza Hut gaming launching and the fact that you can advertise in the games felt like it gave us a, another route to kind of get that more holistic um, campaign. Cool. And then Adludio presented their big idea for uh, premium mobile content. What were your thoughts on Adludio? Yeah, so I mean, as Kim said, you know, that display advertising isn't particularly engaging and it is ignored a lot. So the fact that you can build those engaging ad units is really, is really good. Um, again, maybe seen that somewhere before as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then we had voice uh, from Say It Now. What were your thoughts on Say It Now? Um, yeah, making we've been testing audio and making that audio actionable. I think is a really. I mean. I don't know why no one's thought of it before, and the fact that it's an end-to-end -end solution is great as well. Nice. Uh, and then we finished up with Bump and their approach to engaging uh, younger influencers. What were your thoughts on Bump? Um, really liked Bump as an agency, I think. The fact that they're all a younger audience, they're using the Kickstarter um, scheme. Um, yeah, I thought the concept was really nice. I think probably have a few questions around the longevity and actually implementing it and making it effective for the pilot budget. Okay. But of course, Kat, there can only be one winner. I mean, you could be working with all seven of these companies, uh, but for the purpose of today, we want to announce one winner of the 20K paid pilot. So the winner is? Olvin. Olvin, there we go. Congratulations, Steve.
Well, but thank you very much to everyone who presented today. It was really helpful, and there's definitely people I'll be getting in touch with through Jeremy. Perfect. Yeah, we'll make those introductions. We do have a giant check here as well. That's uh, <laughs> just is it, here. We go. Come on, Steve. This is yours, not mine. All right. Now I'm really disappointed. I can't be there. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Photo moment. We got it. Perfect. Well done, Steve. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks, Naz. <laughs> At least pretend to take it. Thank you very much. And congrats, everybody. Yeah, well done to each of the seven companies for our seven great pitches. Lots of opportunities there. Kat, thank you so much for joining as well uh, and for making this work virtually. Uh, and thank you so much uh, to everyone else for being involved in the brand challenges. It's been a fun uh, couple of days. We'll see you at the Champions of Champions.